Hello and welcome. Here we are again, the Marianne and Corinna duo on Tuesday, usual time. And what are we going to talk about today? I had an interesting experience uh, this past week listening uh, to a recording and I stopped it because questions started to come up for me and it was sort of like, darn it, what is that about that I'm making certain things significant? Mm. And as I was sitting with it, what came for me uh, was that on some level, even though I don't want to admit that, I am still attracted to trauma and drama. And the significance allows me to keep those in my life without mm. even being cognitively aware of it because I don't do trauma and drama, you know? And I found this really baffling. I said, here I am saying I don't do, not even wanting to do it, and yet I'm doing it. Mm. And what was the sign for me? And that is really, I found so helpful. And that's why I brought it up in the conversation yesterday, that it was me making something truly significant. And there was this, when I really looked at it, there was this whole ball waxing caboodle of trauma and drama attached to it. And I said, shucks, that is absolutely interesting that this is how I am couching my still attachment to trauma and drama. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything in that oh. arena? No, oh, no. I am the only one. Yeah. I am the only one. I don't have it. <laughs> it is interesting because even now, while listening to you, it was like, yeah, it is so true about that trauma and drama as not even we see it or we acknowledge it, that it is still because when it's not big and loud, then we could think it's not drama or trauma we are choosing. But is that true? And yeah, the last few days, I today, after our conversation, when done, as it usually does during the night. But today, I it was really all day long playing with asking myself, am I going to make this significant? What am I choosing? Is it really that important? Because I was also perceiving that the drama linked and sitting underneath that importance, being important, significant, it is vivid. Yeah. Even it doesn't look as I make a drama out of it. And as I can say, it's more due to what is going on the last days within my personal life as my dad passed away and I chose. And it's not a one overnight choice I made because I I had yeah I did a lot of questioning this during the last few months but choosing to not fly over and for the funeral so I stay at home etc but of course I have family I have siblings and I have children and I have grandchildren so it brings a lot above because it is not only me and nevertheless at the side it was so clear for me that whatever it takes whatever it will bring up this time i will choose what is true for me what works for me mm -hmm. even if it is 
difficult, not understood, or whatever, because there are several inputs on, on this item. And by choosing to be open without judging myself for it, as really clear and form as this is what I am choosing. And I acknowledge also that it brings up a lot in your world. Mm -hmm. And that's all fine. And this is working for me. And during the conversations or the emails, because it was in, in several ways with phone calls and emailing and messaging, it looked that it went well as smoothly. And it was. Nevertheless, I could perceive, you know, as reading in between the lines, then there was a lot going on. And it was really asking me to be present and asking for start, is this really important for me? What is the importance, importance I pick up? Is it significant? Because it was slightly different when I asked it if it is important or it is significant. So there was slightly some difference. And what I noticed, Karina, is when I choose to not making it significant as letting go of the drama that is knocking at the same time on the door, yeah, then energy started to move and change because what I noticed is when you let go of importance, you let go dropping down the walls. So then there is nothing from outside, whether it is a person or a subject or whatever materialistic, there is nothing to knock on or to fight or, to, you know, everything can move. And that is, I think, what the significance does. If we make something significant, we sort of stop it. It as yes. a sudden becomes this, it's what I see is almost it's against the wall and it becomes big. And so there is no movement possible and it gets the, the issue stuck, but it also gets us stuck in dealing with the issue because it's so huge as yeah. a sudden, so in our face without, and that is the funny thing is, is it doesn't look that way, uh, but it is that way from an energetic perspective, from a movement perspective, and uh, I really uh, decided that any time I run into, this is significant for me, okay, what can I let go of? How can I drop the issue of, the, make it not significant? Because that's the only way for me, from my perspective, to get out of the trauma and drama. Yeah. But there was something, Karina, that I noticed for me that took a, a little more time and questions to before I could let it go that significance. Uh -huh. And it was something about an artwork painting of my dad. Mm, yeah. And it it was for his seventh birth seventieth birthday, and he became 95. So 25 years. I was saying, when the time is there, that's the only thing I really want to have. It's as, because it was some due to, I arranged with an artist to make that painting. So whatever. And perceiving so much that most likely it will not come into my hands. But nevertheless, I became aware that I was still pulling and pushing and doing everything 
because out of the significance and letting them know also, you know, you are aware already 25 years I'm saying this. And finally now <laughs> it's the time. And what is possible now? Because I asked myself, okay, but what is it that it is so significant for me? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's emotional. Yes, it's due to you find it the artist that made that beautiful blah, 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 blah. Because finally, it's only blah, 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 blah. And I became aware of where I was looking for the blah, blah, blah to keep on going <laughs> that significance yeah. as it's my right also. It is my right to have it because I declared it during 25 years. And then I mm -hmm. asked myself, but is it true? Is it truly so important, significant, as in would it declaim or collapse my life if I don't have it? Mm -hmm. And then it was like, you know, oh, yeah. how crazy to think that only that one piece would make whatever I decided it would bring me by having it. Yeah. Because what if I play along even more now with the energies, the aspects my dad it's not left in me, but integrated because somehow, yeah, there is no loss. There is no loss. So I don't require a piece to remember my that. I can play the art yeah. I have from my memories mm -hmm. playing in a different way yeah. with him and that was so much more expensive to go with so i let it go and if it comes i will be happy if it doesn't come it's all well it's all well it's fine it will not stop me on the other side it was perhaps due to that piece that it gave me the possibility to become even more aware, to become even more conscious in how we can play with energies. Who will say it? And isn't that uh, the magic, the miracle? Absolutely. That conscious, what consciousness gifts us, being willing and being open to whatever shows up. And allowing yeah. consciousness to inform ourselves. I mean, I'm finding that uh, so, so magical. And there is so much gratitude for uh, the, the change that has become possible because I was allowing consciousness to inform me to look at this. You know, or look at that. <laughs> What's going on here? Are you sure you want to go that route? Or is there something else possible? <laughs> yes. And that, yes. It, it, it is such an amazing gift. And something that is coming together now with exploring this, letting go of um, the significance is also together goes the need to explain the why. Oh, yeah. Because when there is not any significance, then there you don't have to explain anything. Because there is, there is no isn't. actual why. Why there is have not, to have yeah, this. Yeah. And still um, acknowledging what it is, what it can be for others, how it is for others, but we don't have to align or agree or 
yeah. serve them in their opinions, yeah. we can truly, truly, truly choosing for us and what is true for us and including all those others yeah. because there are a lot there are a lot and due to that it is also because that is what is when someone leaves his body dies as we call it then the significance of the mourning and the tears and the grief and fill in the blank is required because it is attached to see on the scale what was the relationship between those two persons, the one that's still here and the one that mm -hmm. goes. So it is interesting also receiving it completely differently now the condolence they they sent me mm -hmm. and it is opening my heart noticing that there are already a few more coming back to me with a slightly different way of going with that and grief and those things so noticing it in a completely different way that yes consciousness is opening more and more and more on planet earth yeah and the one thing that i have been keenly aware especially since the death of my father some years ago is how much is my behavior a gift to others to help them deal with their grief, with their supposed, uh, either supposed grief or their actual grief, uh, of uh, and allowing them or supporting them in helping uh, uh, to transcend that. And, and moving beyond it. Uh, and it has nothing to do with my level of grief and therefore my level of supposed caring and my level of this, that, and the other. Uh, exactly. it's, it's a gifting, it's a contribution to others. Yeah, because grief is okay. Yeah. As we don't make our grief significant mm -hmm. then we can go with that flow and taking the time that is required to go through to that then it's all fine it is when we make even grief important significant as i require this i am in the need of this because when i don't then it's something different and what grief is for me, I can express grief in a completely different way yeah. than, for example, you. So what is grief for the start? Are we going only with our point of view? And are we also, because that's perhaps an interesting question, do we support people from our own point of view and what is their significant in so approaching mm. can be completely different also yeah, yeah. I, I, and, I hear you yeah and uh, you know yeah. uh different having different points of view about what death means already translates into different ways of grieving yes uh, what I, I learned karina when my mother died 
I was in that time already so different with it because that for me is not really existing as knowing it is a new birth. It is, yeah, yeah it is a transformation. But what I forgot, quote unquote, in the beginning was the grief. As I pushed it nearly under, underneath mm. the consciousness, underneath the, yeah, underneath the beauty, underneath the magic. And then it smacked in my face afterwards. Yeah. And I became aware at that time that, yes, but I didn't listen to my body. I didn't allow my body to cry, to really let it go out of the cells of my body as mm -hmm. it was. So this time I am really more present also. And when the tears come, they may come, but I don't call it grief because in a way it is still a celebration of what is yes and uh i mean what what you just said brought up ages ago almost 30 years ago when my grandmother died uh i didn't grieve and i there actually there were no tears and that may have been because i was already living in the us and no longer in germany uh, but there was a celebration in me because i had seen her the year before and she had told me how she was tired she said i've got two world wars my he her hearing had been bad for most of her life that i knew her but at that point, her eyesight was also going and she loved to read. And so she was just, what's the value in living for me? I'm ready to go. And so mm -hmm. that she managed to go, that was a reason for celebration to me. And, yeah. and I, uh, I remember vividly how inappropriate I was by saying, Good for you. You know, <laughs> you That's did. inappropriate. Yeah. That's really. Uh, you are yeah. a bad girl, Karina. You are a really bad girl. I know. <laughs> oh, I, yes. I'm but so you, you require that because that being bad is the, yeah, the measure of the significance that keeps you in the drama and the trauma. Oh, got you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and on the other side, what this brings up is we don't have to make laughter and we don't have to make joy and happiness significant. What if we truly can let it be? What if we can let the energy be that is present in the moment? Yes whatever yes. that energy is, and not also uh, make it that if somebody dies and I have to be grieving, I can no longer laugh, at least for a year, because that is the period of grieving. So I have to be sad and downtrodden and, uh, and help. Does that really yeah. work for me? Maybe not. You know, what if I enjoy life? What if I enjoy the fact that I am still alive and I want to celebrate that? And what an honoring is that the one who chose another way to go with his energy, with his being, with his spirit, to celebrate it by celebrating life for yourself. It is an honor for the other because does it help? Does it affect does it has an impact on the one who isn't any longer in the body when you are grieving no. for so long no that that is actually agreements that we have morals that that we decided uh this is the correct way of yep. of living of responding but it has nothing to do with the reality i mean 
you could as well ask, why the heck are you not grieving if somebody gets is born? Why are you celebrating? And is death in this reality anything else but being birthed into another reality? Yes, and I can remember vividly that experience when I was pregnant of my first one. Mm -hmm. And I was pregnant for eight months when a friend, her near, yeah, she had a newborn of six, six weeks. It was, if I'm correct, and yeah. um, it's not failing, but that six week old, beautiful baby girl, she died. Mm -hmm. And when the funeral was there, it was so a contrast as I remember that it was going on inside of me, like this couple is mourning, grieving now for letting go, for losing, quote unquote, this baby. And I am here, high pregnant with a newborn life. And the beauty in it that day was that that couple chose to plant a tree together with the placenta. Is it, mm -hmm. do you call it so? So to, to make a hole in the earth, putting the placenta and then a tree on top of it. And it was in that moment that I knew, but how beautiful is that? Mm -hmm. Me thinking in the beginning that the grief came from the sense of loss for them, where it wasn't true because they already were celebrating the new life of their newborn baby of six weeks that was born again in a different way. So as, as immediately then type a kind of the sadness I was, that was really hanging in my throat in that time, in that moment, left because yeah. of the celebration. And I had several experiences where both were on the same time, that and bird. And it is beautiful because it's nothing separate. No, it isn't. So how can we is not is that do we separate it due to the significance that's a good question do we separate it due to significance or does the significance come from the separation yeah and what if it and is the, both what and if it is both, that would, require, that would require a totally different look at life and death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and to overcome that separation. If I change and consider uh, birth here on earth is a death, potentially a death. And I don't even want to label it uh, really as that in another reality. And yeah. death here on earth is birth into a different reality. Then those two are actually merged and they are not separate. Exactly. But if we separate them, then they become significant. That's my take on it. And also... Um... Going with what you are telling is what happening on the other side of the world. We don't see it with our physical eyes. I, yeah. So due to that, is it not existing? And when it's not existing, then it's separate from me, including the separation also. That okay that's a that's a totally different kind of separation i would say yeah. yeah yeah so how many kinds of kinds types of, of separation are have? there yeah. yeah 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 
So and the beauty of playing with questioning yourself where you are stuck or going into drama and trauma or even going into emotion when we notice emotion what if we are questioning the emotion is it emotion due due to it is urging us to move and to yeah to explore something different mm -hmm. or is it an emotion that in truth the energy is stopping us it because is yeah. um, a compact significant emotion yeah and is and it then in truth an emotion emotion uh, i mean uh, i look at emotion as e hyphen motion energy in motion yes. and in that sense uh emotion can be fuel yeah. you know to, for movement but uh, I am also keenly aware, having talked with many people, oh, right now I'm sad, I cannot do, and da, da, da. Uh, there are so many uh, collaterals and definitions to an emotion that really get you stuck. Yeah. And is it that due to lifetimes, emotion is not seen and recognized any longer as that energy in motion? but something as compact and stuck and significant. But because how, how many do, do use the emotion also to defend what they are choosing? Yes. <laughs> and, and, and it is, again, uh, as you said, it is emotion becomes significant. And uh, in the sense of it having to be the appropriate emotion for the moment in time yeah. uh, and uh, we're back again at looking and I have to admit for me uh, I have been all my life I have been uh, uh, a curious person there, there was always this uh, either what's around the corner or uh, Back then as a kid or teenager, it wasn't on, on the cognitive level that much as it has become now asking the question, what if, and fill in the blank. Yeah. Uh, and that is, for me, that is a real motivator to stay with, to ask questions, to be open to the energy that I can perceive. Uh, and even, you know, I, I chuckle because for how long and and you are even aware of that we've known each other long enough that oh i don't perceive energy i don't know how what what is about that and yet i remember back as a kid that i perceived an energy responded to the energy and got punished for it yeah and yeah. that's when I started after that happening several times, you sort of protect yourself and shut it down. Yes. And as I'm now allowing it to be open again, uh, it, it flourishes. And if you allow me, Karina, I would acknowledge something different also due to the time we are together as having conversations, etc. It's the way I saw you blossoming and opening up and the joy, the, the natural joy of living, I perceived from the start in you how that is more and more coming in the front and outside. And it is coming from within as you let go more of definition and significance and whatever. Mm -hmm. So. It is beautiful to, to see and observe what it brings in, in such an expanded way. Yeah, I, I can't add more words, but it, it is as lately we are laughing a lot more. <laughs> it's no. not that I'm laughing more because I always laughed and I was always that kind of humoristic and you know, my hands are always there. But I, 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 it is so much more joy even now 
where we start, it was a joy of the, the come, the contued, not the context, the, the con conversation, the conversation, the, um, the contued, how do, how do you say it? What's in a conversation, what we spoke about. It, or the content. It, the content, that was the word I was looking for. So it was always a joy. But now it is even more joyful because of you letting out more the joy. The joy may guide you even more to go where we're, wherever we go with the conversations we have. So, yes, that's something I want to acknowledge in, yeah, now for you. Thank you. Hey, yeah. My pleasure. And how does it even get any better? So, hmm. And you don't I mean, have to make that significance, that acknowledgement. Yeah, I just <laughs> wanted to reformat in a different way. Is you mean having the German stiff upper lip is no longer significant? <laughs> yes, and I was accused of having some sub, being very subtle in my sarcasm. <laughs> Hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, I, I, because I am a neighbor of you as a Belgian woman yeah. born in Belgium, I am a neighbor of you. So those energies are not really rare for me because, yes, I know them. Yeah. I know them. So, yeah. Could it be that we both let it go of the significance of being a Belgian? Woman yeah. and a Dutch, um, a German woman. So, yeah. yes, let us explore more and letting go even more significance because I'm really keenly aware that there well, is a lot more to let I've, go of. Uh, for me, it's really uh, okay, what's really underneath it? If I notice yeah. I'm making something significant. It's what is underneath, what's going on here, yeah. uh, is for me and the question. Also with the, is it relevant? That, yeah. Yeah. Great, Karina. Let's, Let's see what we bring up next week. What are we cooking up for next week? And uh, what we talked about yesterday, we started playing with the night, with ideas of changing things up a little bit and we have not made a decision we're still playing with possibilities and we'll let everybody know as we come to the space of making a decision on how we're going to continue to play whenever that is the case so or where it is you never where knew it is <laughs> when it is how it is all those things so yeah and have a great week. And Thank you. We'll see each other next. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.